Have you ever thought of Earth as a single, colossal superorganism? This intriguing question sparked a revolutionary concept in the 1970s, known as the Gaia Hypothesis. Named after the Greek goddess who personified the Earth, the Gaia Hypothesis proposes a radical way of viewing our planet and its inhabitants. Rather than seeing life forms as separate entities merely coexisting, the Gaia Hypothesis suggests that all life on Earth is interconnected. From the smallest microorganism in the deepest ocean trench to the largest mammal on the African savanna, every living thing is part of a complex global ecosystem. Each organism in its own way contributes to the evolution and survival of the whole. Just as cells within a body work together to keep the organism alive, so too does every life form on Earth contribute to the health and functioning of the planet. But the Gaia hypothesis goes beyond just interconnectivity. It also introduces the idea of Earth as a conscious entity, a being with a purpose. This doesn't mean that the Earth has thoughts, emotions, or intentions in the way humans do. Rather, it suggests that the Earth, as a whole, has an inherent drive or tendency to maintain conditions suitable for life. This is where the concept of negative feedback systems comes in. These systems act like the Earth's immune system, identifying and correcting imbalances that could threaten life. For instance, if carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere rise too high, the Earth has ways of reducing it, such as through increased plant growth or weathering of rocks. The Gaia hypothesis paints a picture of a planet that is not merely a passive stage upon which life unfolds. Instead, it's an active player in the grand drama of life, influencing and being influenced by the organisms that inhabit it. As we delve deeper into this concept, we'll explore its appeal, the skepticism it has faced, and its contrast to the darker Medea hypothesis. So buckle up as we journey through these fascinating theories that seek to redefine our understanding of life and Earth itself. In this view, Earth is not just a passive stage for life but an active player. The Gaia hypothesis seemed to offer a comforting and inspiring view of our planet. This was not just a theory for the scientific community, it became a beacon of hope a call to arms for environmentalists worldwide. The Gaia hypothesis proposed a planet that was not a passive stage for life, but an active participant, a living entity that cared for its inhabitants. This theory painted a picture of Earth as an intricate cosmic ballet, with all life forms performing a delicate dance of co-evolution. It suggested a world where everything, from the smallest microorganisms to the vast forests and oceans, worked together in harmony to maintain the balance of life. And at the helm of this symphony of existence was Gaia, the Earth, adjusting the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide, ensuring the continuity of life. In a world grappling with environmental crises, the Gaia hypothesis provided a powerful narrative. It offered an alternative perspective, a shift from seeing nature as a resource to be exploited to viewing it as a partner, an ally. It helped fuel the environmental movement, inspiring countless activists to fight for the protection of our planet. But the appeal of the Gaia hypothesis extended beyond its environmental implications. It resonated with people on a deeper, almost spiritual level. It presented Earth as a conscious entity, a nurturing mother who was aware of her purpose. This view appealed to our innate desire for connection, for belonging. It reminded us that we are not separate from nature, but a part of it. Yet, the Gaia hypothesis was not just about inspiring change or fostering a sense of connection. It was a serious scientific theory that suggested complex natural feedback systems. It proposed that Earth had mechanisms in place like a thermostat to regulate its conditions and maintain the delicate balance necessary for life. But not everyone was convinced by this view of Earth as a nurturing mother. While the Gaia hypothesis gained popularity and inspired many, it also sparked skepticism and debate, particularly within the scientific community. But that is a story for the next scene. For now, let's cherish the comforting image of Gaia, our caring Earth, guiding us through the cosmos. While the Gaia hypothesis was inspiring, it also faced strong skepticism. This is where our story takes a turn. Despite its appeal and popularity among environmentalists, the Gaia hypothesis was not universally accepted in the scientific community. The idea of Earth as a sentient superorganism while intriguing was met with doubt and skepticism, but why? Well, the main issue was the compatibility of the Gaia hypothesis with the scientific method and principles of evolutionary biology. The scientific method, as we know, is based on empirical evidence and the Gaia hypothesis seemed to lack this crucial component. 
There were no concrete data or observable phenomena that could validate the idea of Earth as a self-regulating entity. Many scientists felt that the hypothesis was more philosophical or metaphysical than scientific, and this sparked a heated debate. In addition, the Gaia hypothesis seemed to contradict the principles of evolutionary biology. According to these principles, life evolves through natural selection, with the fittest species surviving and reproducing. But the Gaia hypothesis implies that life forms cooperate to maintain the planet's homeostasis, suggesting a level of purpose and intention that is not typically associated with evolutionary processes. Moreover, the hypothesis did not provide a clear explanation of how the supposed self-regulation of the planet could occur. How could diverse life forms, each with their own survival needs and strategies, work together to maintain the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide levels? These unanswered questions added to the skepticism. In the end, while the Gaia hypothesis provided a fascinating perspective on our planet and its life forms, it was met with scientific skepticism due to its lack of empirical evidence and compatibility with established scientific principles. But this skepticism did not mean the end of the discussion. Instead, it paved the way for new theories and hypotheses to emerge, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of life on Earth. And then, a contrasting view emerged. This is the Medea hypothesis which proposes a much darker view of Earth's relationship with life. But that, dear listener, is a story for the next scene. What if instead of nurturing life, Earth is actually trying to eliminate complex life forms? Now that's a question that might cause you to sit up and take notice. Welcome to the Medea Hypothesis, a theory that presents a starkly different view of the relationship between life and Earth. Instead of the nurturing symbiotic relationship proposed by the Gaia Hypothesis, the Medea Hypothesis suggests that Earth might actually be hostile to complex life, named after the Greek mythological character Medea, who killed her own children. This hypothesis suggests that life, particularly complex life, is in a constant struggle against the very planet it calls home. Proposed by paleontologist Peter Ward, this theory posits that life forms, especially complex ones, are actually detrimental to their own long-term survival. How so? Well, according to Ward, complex life forms tend to deplete resources and destabilize the global environment, causing mass extinctions. Take the great oxygenation event, for instance. This was a time when cyanobacteria, a simple life form, started producing oxygen through photosynthesis. While oxygen is essential for us, it was a poison to many forms of life existing at that time. This event led to one of the most severe extinction events in Earth's history. Furthermore, the Medea hypothesis suggests that Earth might prefer a simpler unicellular environment. It argues that a planet dominated by unicellular life is more stable and resilient. This is because unicellular organisms are more adaptable to environmental changes. They can survive in extreme conditions, from boiling hot springs to the icy cold of the Arctic. In essence, the Medea hypothesis presents a grim picture of Earth's future, one where complex life forms are gradually eliminated, returning the planet to a simpler unicellular state. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But remember, while this hypothesis is certainly thought-provoking, it's just one of many theories about the relationship between life and Earth. So, are we destined for doom? or is there hope for complex life on Earth? As with many scientific theories, the jury is still out, but one thing is for sure, these hypotheses, Gaia and Medea, present fascinating perspectives that challenge us to think deeply about our planet and our place in it. This hypothesis presents a starkly different view of the relationship between life and Earth. These contrasting views of Earth have sparked lively debates in the scientific community. The Gaia hypothesis, with its vision of a self-regulating planet, has found its champions and critics. While some have embraced it as a revolutionary way of understanding the Earth's systems, others have dismissed it as unscientific, arguing that it lacks empirical evidence and is incompatible with evolutionary biology principles. In contrast, the Medea hypothesis, with its grim forecast of life's self-destructive tendencies, has also provoked vigorous discussion. Some scientists see it as a necessary counterbalance to Gaia's optimistic perspective, a sobering reminder of life's potential for self-destruction. Others, however, argue that the hypothesis is overly pessimistic and lacks a comprehensive understanding of the complex interactions within Earth's biosphere. These debates have spurred further research, pushing scientists to explore new frontiers in Earth science, evolutionary biology, and ecology. 
The controversy surrounding these hypotheses has, in a way, been a catalyst for progress, challenging scientists to refine their theories and gather more evidence. Looking ahead, the future of these hypotheses remains open and exciting. As we continue to study our planet, we will inevitably refine, revise, and perhaps even replace these theories. Yet the Gaia and Medea hypotheses will always hold a special place in our understanding of Earth. They have forced us to confront the complex and often paradoxical relationship between life and Earth, prompting us to ask profound questions about our planet's past, present, and future. So, as we continue to explore and unravel the mysteries of our home, we must remember that our understanding is always evolving, always in flux. The debates and discussions sparked by these hypotheses are a testament to the dynamic nature of scientific inquiry, a process that thrives on challenge, change, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Whether nurturing Gaia or destructive Medea, our understanding of Earth and its relationship with life continues to evolve.